Over the last four years, we have seen all kinds of different Google Assistant compatible devices. We have little ones, we have little screens, we have big screens, and much more. Well, in today's video, we're gonna check out one that has a different purpose. This is the Lenovo Smart Clock Essential. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. So I've previously reviewed the Lenovo Smart Clock, which is a cool little smart display. Um, compared to other smart displays, it doesn't have the option to play videos, but it's really cool that you have the screen, you can have different little uh, pictures show up, and it's nice to see the clock and to see if Google Assistant is interacting with you. Well, this brand new Lenovo Smart Clock Essential has many of those same features, except for it doesn't have the screen. It essentially is just an alarm clock with the time right on there, shows you if you have an alarm set and if the Google Assistant's listening to you and so on. So here on the box really doesn't tell us much other than the name and show off a little bit of the product. And over here, it does have YouTube Music, Spotify, it has Chromecast built in, Pandora works with thousands and thousands of different smart home devices. So let's go ahead, unbox it and see what else it can do. So there we have the Smart Clock Essential. And then it comes with a Lenovo power adapter, kind of similar to their style. It is a little bit smaller. And it also comes with a little instruction manual here. And in here it has a just start with hey Google. And so then here's a bunch of different things that you can ask and so on. And then a warranty and quick start guide. So like every other Google Assistant speaker, we're just going to be using the Google Home app to get this set up. It's on there pretty good. So right here, you'll notice on the screen, those are two different microphones. So it's not an imperfection or anything. On the bottom here, it has some nice pads so that it would stay in place. And then here we have a few more buttons than we saw on the previous model. So there you had volume up and down. Here we have volume down, I'll look at it this way, volume down, up, a play button, and then an alarm clock button. And then back here, very similar on the very back where you have the power cable, you have the microphone mute button, and then you are able to charge a device. But one other unique part about the alarm clock essential is it has a nightlight right here on the back that we will be testing out. So let's go ahead and plug this in. Okay, so first it's showing everything right here. So it looks like we need to set it up before it will properly display what is available. So let's head into the Google Home app. Now right here, it's giving me a prompt to set it up. So I'm just going to tap right there. Here I'm going to add it into my home and then we're going to choose a room to add it into. All right, here it asks if we heard the sound. Yes, we did. Do we want to send improvement report? Sure. And then here we're going to add this into our office and we're gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call it Smart Clock. And then we're gonna choose the Wi-Fi we add it to. And now like other Google Assistant speakers here, it's giving us some info about the speaker, what it's going to be sharing with other Google partners and so on. Now we want to enable voice match. That's so it knows who you are. Then we agree. And now it's asking what music service you wanna use. I'm gonna use YouTube Music. You could link a radio service like Sirius XM. I'm going to select Knock Now, and then you have the option to link different video services so that you could play this over on a Chromecast device. You don't have a screen on here, so you can't play videos on here. And now the smart clock is ready. And as you can see here, it automatically set the time and it is telling me the local temperature. So that's one of the best parts about this is it's automatically connected to the internet. It's always going to have the correct time. One of the downsides, it's plugged in. So if the power goes out, you wouldn't know what time it is unless you have a phone or another clock nearby. So here in the Google Home app, it's telling us some other things you, you can do. So just like any other Google Assistant speaker, you would be able to ask it the weather or your calendar, set reminders, and everything that other Google Assistant devices can do, this is able to do. So let's select Finish Setup. Now before we go into the settings, let's take a look at what it can do. So it did say it has volume, so when we push the volume, you can see the volume change right there on the top. It can go up and down. Here we have the play button. If I push play, that's not gonna do anything because I don't have anything playing. Hey Google, play my new jams playlist from YouTube Music. 
All right, playing the YouTube music playlist called New Jams. So then right there on the top, I have the option to adjust the volume or I can simply push the play button to pause it and then I can play it again. So it's nice that you do have that button on there if sometimes you don't wanna use your voice to pause or play. And then next we have the alarm clock button. So if I just push the alarm clock, here it's showing that we have no alarm clock set. So let's go ahead and set an alarm for every day this week. Hey Google. Set a weekday alarm at 7.30 a.m. Weekdays at 7.30 a.m. Set. Let's go ahead and set one more alarm. Hey Google. Set an alarm in one minute. 3.36 p.m. Set. Now if I push the clock button, it's going to show that first alarm that I have set. And here you can see it's showing that it's set on weekdays, so Monday through Friday at 7.30 a.m. So if I push that again, it's gonna to go to the second alarm that is set at 3.36 and that's just for today. Now when an alarm goes off, you have a few ways to dismiss the alarm. One of them is to simply tap the Smart Clock Essential and that will dismiss the alarm. The other one is to say stop and that will dismiss it as well or you can activate Google Assistant and you can dismiss it. So here the alarm goes off, I just tap it, a little bit of a tap, and there it dismissed the alarm. Now if we head into the Google Home app, and right here we're gonna go to Smart Clock, and then in the settings, we then have the option for alarms and timers right here at the top. So here you can see those alarms and timers that you have set, and so if I want to add, say, another timer, set a 30 second timer. Sure, 30 seconds, starting now. So that's then going to appear over here. You can see we got the timer right there. Let's see if it shows up as one of the alarms. Nope, so only alarms will show up under the clock button. And now let's see what happens when the timer goes off. Stop. So without me having to activate Google Assistant or touch the device, I then was able to stop the alarm and so now it's not going to continue on. Now you can also set alarms a few other ways. You could set a weekend alarm, or you could set a daily alarm, and you can also cancel those by voice. Cancel my Thursday 3.46 p.m. alarm. Okay, your alarm for 3.36 p.m. is canceled. So there you can see it removed that alarm from the Google Home app. Now you do have the option to manually set the alarm clock right here by just holding down the alarm clock button for two seconds. Now it is in alarm clock set mode. So here I can choose what days I want it to run. So if I push the plus, here it will go through. We have the weekdays, weekends, we have a single day, and then here it's gonna go back to all days. And then if we push minus, it's going to go the reverse way. And then when we find the one we want, so let's say we want a weekend alarm, I can push the alarm clock button and then here it's giving me the option to set the time. So I can then go to 9 a.m. and then you could set the minutes. And once you push the alarm clock, it's then going to save that alarm and then give you an option to set a second alarm. Now, if you don't want to continue to save more alarms, all you need to do is hold down the alarm clock button for two seconds and then it will take you back to here. So now if we push alarm, we can see that we have our weekend alarm set. Now again, you can cancel this all by voice or create all these by voice. Now when you're in the alarm clock menu, it will stay on for eight seconds and then it will go back to the main clock. Now if you want to cancel your alarm, you just jump into the alarm clock menu, find the alarm you want to cancel. So let's cancel this 8 a.m. one and then push volume down and the alarm clock button at the same time. There you can see it remove that one and now the 9.05 alarm clock is the only one that's there. Cancel my weekend alarm. No problem. Canceled your alarm weekends at 9.05 a.m. And there you can see the alarm indicator did go away. So that's the alarm function that you have here on the alarm clock essential. Now down here at the very bottom, you can actually see the weather. So right now it's showing a sun with clouds, so it's a cloudy day. And then over here you can see the weather, so it's showing 47 degrees Fahrenheit. So that will just show what the current weather for your location is outside. Here are the different icons you'll see for weather. You have sun, wind, rain, fog, cloudy, snow, thunderstorms, and bad weather. 
Now, there is no touchscreen or anything on this. It is essentially just an alarm clock, just like the name states. And the good part about that is it's going to cost a little less than something that has a screen like the original smart clock. Now, if we head into the Google Home app, and right here, we're gonna go to smart clock. I do have a few options first. Up here at the settings, I can change the bass and the treble. Right now, it does sound a little too trebly, so I'm gonna put the bass there. And then in the settings, so you can change the name, you can change your home it's in, the room it's in. Next, you have groups. So if we want to create a group, let's go ahead and create a new group called alarm clocks. So then we can go back to the main page, scroll down and see alarm clocks. And heading into here, we can then add more devices. So let's go ahead and add this clock. And then we're also going to add the Nest Mini to do a little bit of sound comparison in just a bit. So there you have a group just like we have on other devices. Next, you have your Wi-Fi. Here we have digital well-being. So if you have this in a kid's room, maybe there's certain music you don't want them listening to, and you have this link to your YouTube music. Under digital well-being, you have the option to turn on different filters. So uh, certain music won't play. And then also you have the option where it can't cast videos to a TV. So if you have a Chromecast in the same room or in your home, they wouldn't be able to play certain videos on that Chromecast. So that is how you set that up. Next, you have some options where you can turn on a sound at the beginning of your request or at the end. So when I ask it something right now, what's your favorite color? I like blue, red, yellow, and green. Google's colors. When it heard me, all it did was light up the lights. But if we come in here and turn on the start sound, how many days tell Easter? Easter in Orem is in 66 days. Not only did it light up, it also gave a little chime indicating that it heard me so that I know it was listening when I gave my request. So that's how you can turn that on and off. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back off. Here you have night mode. Night mode allows you to have a lower sound at night and it can also decrease the brightness of the LEDs here. So if at night we want those uh, Google Assistant LEDs to change, we can do that. It's not changing the other clock interface. And then here you have the maximum volume at night and you can have the schedule set there when it turns on and when it turns off. Next, you have lower volume when you're listening. So if you're watching a Chromecast and you activate this, it would turn down the Chromecast and then so that this could hear you better. I'm not gonna use this in a room with a Chromecast, so I'm going to keep that off. And then here it's asking if you want to allow others to cast media to it. So this can be used as a cast device. So typically when you hear casting, you think of playing movies on the TV. Well, this works as a cast speaker. So if I go in here to YouTube music, I push the cast icon. Down here, it's showing my smart clock. So now my phone is going to connect to this and whatever I play is going to then come through this speaker. So if you don't want others in your home that have Android devices to see that pop up when you're casting music, you would want to turn that off as well. Next, you have Bluetooth paired devices. So you can actually use this to pair your phone to it. So let's say you're listening to an Audible audiobook and you wanna to listen to this as the speaker, you could pair your phone and do that. Or if you have another speaker, that you wanna pair this to a bigger Bluetooth speaker in the room, you would be able to do that by going into the default music speaker and here you can pair Bluetooth speaker to it. So instead of coming out of this small speaker, it's coming out of the big speaker that you have in the room. And then if you have another cast speaker that you want it to play music on instead of this speaker, you have all of those cast options right there. I have quite a few uh, different that show up here. And here you have the default TV. So if you do have a Chromecast device and you want the videos to always play on that Chromecast device, you can adjust that right here. And then here you have that equalizer where you can adjust the bass and the treble. Now going down here, you have a few more things where you can allow for the personalized results. So that means it knows the difference between you and other people in your home. If you turn that off, certain features are not going to work. So I always have it on. Next, we have Google sensitivity. So sometimes when you activate a Google speaker, the one in the other room heard you and not the one you were talking to. So this feature allows you to go in and say, I don't want this one to hear me as much because it's not the big speaker. I want the one in the other room to hear me. So if you wanted this one to hear you more, you would turn this to most sensitive. So we're gonna turn this down just a little bit 
and I could go and adjust the other devices there. Here you have notifications. So if you do have a reminder set and you receive a notification, it will show one little white dot for about 15 minutes when you have that notification coming up, showing that you do have something that needs to be addressed. Hey Google. Remind me to take out the trash in 15 minutes. Got it, I'll remind you at 4.01 p.m. And then when that notification is ready, here you will see the light pop up on the smart clock. I have a reminder for Brett. Now here our reminder is ready, so that's what that dot is indicating. So if you only see one dot, all you need to do is say, hey Google, what's my reminder? You have one reminder. Today at 4.01 p.m., take out the trash in. Trash in. I need to do that. Now once you ask for the reminder, it will then make that little dot go away or it will go away 10 minutes after the reminder goes off. And then if you do know you have a reminder, you can just ask, what's my reminder? And it will let you know. Next you have YouTube settings and restricted mode. So again, if you wanna filter content that's playing on YouTube on a nearby TV or something, you would wanna come in here and turn these on so that it does filter those. Next, you have duo calling. So with duo calling, you can now call other speakers in your home or you can call other people that use Google Duo. So if you want this device to be added to that, you would go through the setup here so that this links to your Google Duo account. But that also means that if anyone calls you over Google Duo, it will also ring on any of the smart displays or smart clocks that you have linked in your home. So you may wanna turn that off if this isn't your main device if you're using this in a kid's room or something like that. Next, you have group delay. So if you have these in a group, you can come in there and adjust that. Here under privacy, I have the option to turn off those crash reports that would be sent to Google. I can remove voice match, I can remove the device, and then I can also change from a 12 hour to a 24 hour format. So there you can see it quickly adjusts over there just like that. So those are all the settings that you have here in the Lenovo Smart Clock Essential. So just like other Google Assistant speakers, all of those settings were pretty much the same. Now this does have one different feature, which the other ones don't, which is the built-in nightlight. Now before we turn on the nightlight, we do need to turn off the lights in the room, and this will control any of the smart home devices that you do have. Turn off the lights. Now that we have the lights off, let's turn it on. Turn on nightlight. And there you can see the nightlight. Now in my camera, it's flashing, but it's not doing that in real life. So this is 31 lumens. It's not drastically bright, but I think it's enough that it would help you be able to wander around the room a little bit. And then you have the options to control that brightness. Set nightlight brightness to 10. Set nightlight brightness to 50. Set nightlight brightness to 100. And so there you can see that brightness changed. Now, if you want to manually turn on the nightlight, all you need to do is hold down the volume down. And there the nightlight does turn on, so you don't need to activate it by voice. Now you can also change the brightness of the clock here. So here you can see it looks really good at night, but let's go ahead and adjust its brightness. Set screen brightness to 50%. Got it, setting the screen's brightness to 50%. Set screen brightness to 1%. Sure, setting the screen's brightness to 1%. And there you go, it does get pretty dim. So at night, that's not going to be too bright to fall asleep. Set screen brightness to zero. Sure, setting the screen's brightness to 0%. And if you do want to turn off the display, you are able to do that. So let's go ahead, turn back on the lights. So during the day at 0%, here you can see it a tiny bit. Set screen brightness to 1%. Sure, setting the screen's brightness to 1%. So I didn't see much change there. Set screen brightness to 50%. Sure, setting the screen's brightness to 50%. Much easier to read. Set screen brightness to 100%. Sure, setting the screen's brightness to 100%. So there you go. That is how you can adjust the screen brightness as well as the nightlight on the back. I think those are some really nice 
features that have been included. Now, the last thing to test out is the speaker comparison to other speakers of its size. So this has a 1.5 three watt speaker built inside. I'm not sure exactly what these have, but let's go ahead and do a test. I'm gonna play some music and um, go through the different speakers to see how they sound. And so that is the sound quality on these speakers. The new Smart Clock Essential had a much more louder and full sound than the original Smart Clock. The Nest Mini has a much better overall sound compared to these two with much more bass and just better treble clarity. The Smart Clock Essential has some pretty good sound. It gets really loud, but not as crisp as I would like it to be compared to Google's speakers. Now here we didn't test to see if it will charge. Let's do that real quick. Now here we do have the USB port on the back. Let's go ahead and do a test to make sure it charges your phone. Now my daughter does use this for charging her Fitbit, which is nice that it has. And here it does show that it is charging. It's not showing fast charging or anything like that, but it's nice that you do have another plug here that you could use to plug in your device to charge it up. One thing the essential is missing that the smart clock does have is the option to change the alarm. So in here, we can select set an alarm, we can set the time, and then we can scroll down, choose when it's going to repeat. And then right here, we have the alarm tone. So I can easily adjust what tone I want it to be and so on. Now there's not a ton of alarm sounds, but you do have the option. Where here, you don't have the option to change the alarm tone. There is another option though, where you can actually uh, change what type of alarm you have. So you have the regular alarm, or you can set what are called media alarms. So with media alarms, it can then pull from different music sources to play music as your alarm tone. Set a media alarm at 4.15. Okay, and what would you like me to play? Moana soundtrack. Done. I'll play the album Moana, original motion picture soundtrack, deluxe edition for 4.16 p.m. And there it set my media alarm. Now I do pay for YouTube music, so it's going to play exactly what I want. If you don't pay for a music service, it would then just play a radio of that type of music that you asked it to play. So here at 416, the media alarm is now going and you would dismiss it like any other alarm where you can tap on it, stop. Or you can say stop and that will dismiss that alarm as well. And when we flip the switch on the back to mute Google Assistant. The mic is muted. And then here it's showing that the mic is currently mute so that you know that it's not going to listen to you. Hey Google. What's the weather tomorrow? Oh. The mic's back on. Hey Google. Make me a sandwich. Poof. You're a sandwich. That was fast. And now to give it a permanent home, here we're going to be replacing an original Google Home and this old style alarm clock with the Lenovo Smart Clock Essential. Now the good news, the Smart Clock Essential automatically sets the time. Here you can see the old alarm clock, the time isn't set. If the power ever goes out, you would have to reset it. And comparing the features, the alarm clock does have a radio and a speaker and um, you can set wake times and turn it on and off and different things. But I would say the new style alarm clock being able to have it fully voice activated and have the radio wake up to whatever radio station you want in clear sound works really great. And the option to quickly create and see the alarms that you have set is definitely worth the upgrade. 
and that is the Lenovo Smart Clock Essential. So compared to a device with the screen, it just depends on what you want. I like that my daughter has this. She can easily see pictures on here and it kind of makes it fun. Where over here, you don't get all of that. You just get the simple clock, weather, and so on, where maybe that's all you need. I do like how they added controls for the alarm button and you have the play and pause. And then I like on the back how you do have the new nightlight, which is kind of cool to have. And so it really just depends on what you're looking for in your device. If you have any further questions about this device and how it works, please let me know in the comments below. And if you would like to see the review of the Lenovo Smart Clock, you can check out that video over here on the side. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.